Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can create some melee combat. This includes using animation events to detect collision, how the attack animation is configured on our player, a simple enemy health script and more. If you have a tutorial you want to see, I have a form in the description you can fill out. Now let's get started. So in this scene, as you can see, I have a main camera, I have a tile map which features this grass tile set with a box collider on it. I then have a player and an enemy. Now this player has a sprite renderer, an animator with an animator controller, a player movement script, a box collider 2D and a rigid body 2D. If I double click on the player's animation controller and go to our animator tab here, if you do not have this animator tab, go to window, animation, animator. You can see I have three animations. I have idle, I have walk and I have attack. And you can see those that I can cycle through my animations right here. Currently, I have it set up so if I move, I transition from my idle animation to my walking animation using this is walking boolean and vice versa when we go back to idle. I then have a third animation for attack which we haven't set up yet. And if I open our player movement script, you can see that's exactly what we have. I have a reference to our speed, a reference to our animator, a private float called move that is assigned to our horizontal input, and then a reference to our rigid body. And we just check to see if this move float is bigger than zero or smaller than zero, we set is walking to true. And if it is zero, then we set it to false, meaning we have our idle animation playing. All our enemy is just the same sprite, except I've set the color from white like this, just to a slight red, just to give off the enemy vibe. Then finally on our enemy, I have a layer called enemy with a capital E and I'll have this enemy assigned to this layer. I then have an animation controller for our enemy, which if I double click, again, I have three animations, one for idle, one for being hurt and one for dying. Currently, the only one that is set up is our enemy idle as this is the state that when the game starts, our enemy automatically transitions into the idle animation. And later in the video, we are gonna be setting up these other two animations depending on the state of the enemy. And finally, if you want to use these sprites and follow along exactly with this video, these sprites can be found via a link in the description. They're completely free. They are not mine and they'll be credited in the description. Similar with this grassland tile set, this can be found in the description and it will be taken to the owner's page. In regards to our character assets, these are the assets from the pack I'm using. I've divided them into their individual assets using these settings here. Now that that is out of the way, it's time we make a start. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the attack animation so that when we click on our mouse or we press a button, an attack animation plays. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select our player. I'm going to go to animator here and I'm going to go to our parameters here. Press the little plus sign and add a boolean and I'm just going to call this is attacking. I'm then going to right click from my idle and make a transition to our attack. Do one back to idle and then do the same for our walk. So you should have just added four new transitions. So from our idle to our attack, which is this arrow here, I'm gonna open up our settings on the side, disable exit time and disable transition duration as we want it to happen straight away. Then we're gonna add a condition down here and we're gonna check if is attacking is equal to true. So if we are in our idle animation and we turn is attacking to true in code, we will immediately transition to this attack animation. When we go from attack to idle, I'm again gonna disable exit time transition duration to zero. And now we need two conditions. We need to check if is walking is false and also if is attacking is false. So if both of these things are false, we will go back to our idle animation. Now for our walk to our attack, let's go to that, disable exit time, disable transition duration, go to conditions. And again, all we need to do is check if attacking is true. And then when we're going from attack to a walk, disable exit time and our transition duration, add a condition to check if walking is true, and then add another condition to check that attacking is false. And now we should be completely set up with these animations. Now, if we go into our player movement script here, before we make this code a little bit more complex, let's just check if input dot mouse button down, we can grab a reference to our animator and use anim dot set ball is attacking to true. So now that we have enabled attacking, now if we press play, you can see I can walk forward and we transition to our walking animation. But if I click on the mouse, you can see we do in fact attack, but then we infinitely loop in this attack. And that is not what we want. So one thing that we're gonna do in this project that is gonna be beneficial is we're gonna use something known as animation events. This is essentially something that we can apply to certain keys of our animation that will trigger functions that we can set up from our script. So that means if you're watching at home with a completely different attack animation, you can trigger this event at whatever key you want. And we're gonna use a few animation events throughout this. And this just means you can use whatever animation you need and it'll be a little bit easier to follow along and adapt to changes in your animations and your project. So back in our script here, I'm gonna go underneath our update and create a new function, call this public, so we can access it from the inspector, public void end attack. And inside this function, all we're gonna do is anim.setball is attacking to false. 
Now with this function, we can now head over to our player attack animation. So select your player and go to the attack animation. And on the last frame of our attack, so we can go to this keyframe right here, I'm gonna go ahead and click this little button here, which says add event. And you can see on our keyframe now, we've got this little line here. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And you can see in the top right in our inspector, we have a little drop down for functions. And you can see the function that we've got here is end attack as this is the only public function we have in this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now you can see that if we press play, I can walk around, we can transition between our walk and our idle. And if I click, you can see we attack and then we go back to our idle animation. But you can see when we attack our enemy, nothing is currently happening. So now here's where the enemy layer comes in because the layer on our enemy is what we're gonna to use to identify any colliders in our scene that are attached to an enemy. We can then access the game objects that this collider is on, which in our case means we can access the player health script on our enemy and take health away from it. But we haven't yet made a player health script for our enemy. We're gonna do that later in the video. For now, what I'm gonna do is create another public function and I'm gonna call this public void attack. And the reason we're making another function for this is because we're going to trigger this at a certain frame of our animation. Again, for the similar reason that I used earlier. So you can place this anywhere you want in your animation. So if you have a longer build up animation with a larger weapon, for example, you can trigger this on the point of impact and not too early on. So this should hopefully be a little bit more adaptable for your project. So the most effective way that you may have seen melee combat being done in Unity is using a function known as physics 2D overlap circle all. And we're going to be using that as well, as it is the most effective way to check for any overlaps of collision. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to create an array of Collider 2Ds. So Collider 2D and then use two straight brackets to make an array of this. An array being multiple of this object. And we're just going to call this enemy. We're then going to set this to physics 2D dot overlap circle all. You can see if we hover over this, it already has this array here. So if we took away this array point, we would get an error when we finish the line because this has to be an array. Overlap circle all essentially creates a circle in our game and any colliders that go in that circle will be added to this array. And the first parameter it takes in is a vector two point. So we need to create a point in our game where we want the circle to be, which in our case, we want it to be in the radius of the sword. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna type in public game object attack point. So now we can do attack point dot transform dot position because we're referencing a position not a game object we then need to reference the radius of this circle so we can make another public float for radius and finally so we only check for enemies we're going to create a layer mask so we're going to do public layer mask enemies and then we can just pass in this enemies here and then when we go back into our editor we can assign our enemy layer to this layer mask this means that if we had a character that was not an enemy or did not have this tag and we tried to attack it nothing would happen as it doesn't have the enemy tag so now we've referenced any enemies that we have just collided with we need to do damage to any and all enemies inside this circle and the reason i emphasize on this is because we're going to be using a for each loop for this a for each loop if you don't know essentially we access an array or a list of items and for each item inside that array we can do something Thing to every single one so what i'm going to do i'm going to change this to game object we can change item to enemy game object and then the collection that we're looking for is the collection we've just made here enemy so now we can reference enemy and you can see we're getting an error here we cannot convert type collider from game object and that's because i've put game object instead of collider 2d here so we're going to change this to collider 2d before we create the script we can just do debug dot log hit enemy so if we had two enemies and we hit them both we would get this debug log twice because we've accessed two enemies so for every enemy we are triggering this debug log back in the editor go to our player and we can configure a few things now so on our enemies let's set the enemy layer to enemy and now let's set an attack point so we need to create an attack point so on our player let's right click create empty call it attack point and we can just drag this to here for now we can then drag in this attack point and set the radius to something like 0.5 and you could say that we're done here but the only problem is we don't actually know how big this circle is or we can't visualize it. So we're going to use a function called onDraw gizmos so we can actually visualize this in the editor. This will not affect anything in our game when we press play, but it just means we can set up the circle correctly and accurately. So now back in our script, let's go down and create the function private to void on draw gizmos. And then we can just do gizmos dot draw wire sphere. And we can just pass in the same parameters that we have for our overlap circle, meaning it will be exactly the same. So we can just do attack point dot transform dot position and then radius for the radius. Back in our editor, you can see we have a giant circle now. If you cannot see this, you most likely have this button unchecked. As you can see, if I uncheck it, I now have no circle. But when I press it, we have a circle pop up. So now we can configure these points to our liking. But to get the most accurate response, let's go to our animation tab go to our attack and the frame that we want this to trigger. So in my case, it's the third frame. 
as you can see this is when we have the most impact as a sort of slicing through the air so now let's grab our attack point and let's just move this over here and then let's make this radius a little bit smaller to something like this and you can see that when we trigger this function we're going to do it right here but right now we have this attack function and we're not calling it from anywhere and we're not going to call it from the script at any point. We're going to do similar to what we did with our end attack event. And we're going to create a new event on the same frame that we configured our circle. So let's create another animation event. Go to our function and let's use the attack function. And now you can see as I walk around, if I click, we have nothing in the debug as we haven't attacked an enemy. But if I walk up to this enemy and I click on it, you can see we have a debug for our hit enemy down below. And I can do this a second, a third and a full time. And you can see in our debug, we have four log messages for every time we hit our enemy. So now we've done most of the things we need to do for our player, it's time to set up the enemy side of things. So what I'm gonna do is on our enemy, I'm gonna add component and I'm gonna type in enemy health. I'm gonna double click on this and open it up in Visual Studio. Now the script is gonna be simple for now. We're gonna add a little bit more to the script shortly when we access those other animations we mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna do public float health. And for now, we're gonna check if health is smaller than or equal to zero. We're just gonna do a small debug log and say enemy is dead so now what we're going to do go back to our player movement script and in our for each loop we're going to access the current enemy game object i'm going to do get component because we want to reference a component on our enemy which is going to be our enemy health script so i'm going to do get component enemy health use our brackets and then do dot so we're now at a point where anything after this point is technically inside of this so we can now reference our health as it's a public variable so enemy game object dot get component health and then we can do a minus equals something like 10 if we want to configure how much damage we do we could create a public float like this public float damage scroll back down and change this 10 to this new damage float back in the editor let's select our enemy and let's give it a health of 50. Let's go to our player and let's set this damage variable to 20. And now if we select our enemy and press play, you can see that right now, if we attack and we're not near our enemy, it still has 50 health. But once we walk over to our enemy and we attack it, the health goes from 50 to 30. If we can select it again, it will go to 10. And one more time, we'll get a debug saying our enemy is dead. So now we're gonna configure the animations to add some visualization to our enemy when it is attacked and when it dies. So what I'm gonna do, if we select our enemy and then double click on our enemy controller, it will take us to this animation controller. I'm gonna create a new parameter and I'm gonna use a trigger this time. And I'm just gonna type in attacked with a capital A. If you're following along exactly, I'm gonna use this any state. If you can't see it, just scroll out a bit and it will be somewhere. Just drag it in. I'm gonna right click, make transition, go to our enemy hurt. And on this transition here, disable extra time, disable transition duration, and set our conditions to attacked. And then we can go back from our enemy hurt to our idle. Now for this one, we're gonna give it an exit time of one, but we can disable the transition duration because we want the full animation to play. And then we want the enemy idle animation to play. And make sure on your enemy dead and enemy hurt animations, loop time is disabled. You may have already done this if you're using your own animations, but if you're using the ones from the video, make sure to do this. Because now we can press play and we can actually test this in the editor without using any code. I can enable this trigger and you can see there is a very slight damage function. So now what I'm gonna do in our enemy health script, so we can trigger these animations, I'm gonna create a second public float and call this current health. And we're gonna use this float to check if our health has gone down at any point. And if it has, let's trigger that animation. Let's also grab a reference to our animator. So private animator anim. In our start function, we can do anim equals get component animator. So now in our start function, let's set current health equal to health straight away. And now in our update function, we can check if health at any point is smaller than current health. That means our enemy has just taken damage. So the first thing we wanna do is set our current health back to our health. This means that straight away, we can check for this if statement again. Without this, we could only check this if statement once as our current health will no longer be our health. But now underneath this, we can now reference our anim and we can do anim.setTrigger attacked with a capital A, exactly how we did in the editor. And now if we press play on this, I can walk over to our enemy and you can see if I attack him, you can see we have a little damage flash. And that will happen every time. But at the moment, we can do this infinitely because the enemy does not die. But the damage flash is there. And now I'm gonna create one more parameter on our enemy controller. And I'm just gonna call this is dead. I'm now gonna go to our any state, make a transition to our enemy dead. And on this transition, let's make sure there's no exit time, no transition duration, and let's set the condition to is dead being true. We don't necessarily need to have an exit for this. We can just have the last frame of this animation, this one right here, beat the last thing the players see of this enemy. And after this, we could then disable the enemy or destroy it or whatever you want to do. So now back in script with our debug.log, we can do anim.setball is dead to true. 
And before we play this, let's make sure to uncheck can transition to self because otherwise the game will infinitely restart this animation as every frame is dead is being set to true, meaning this animation will not be given the chance to play outright. We kill this enemy once and then it stays dead and is allowed to play the animation from start to finish. And now we can officially test this. If we walk over to our enemy and I click, it takes damage, takes damage again and we can officially kill him and our poor enemy crumbles to the ground. So just like that guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully it gave you everything you need for some very simple melee combat. If you'd like to see me go more in depth on this topic, make sure to let me know in the comments or fill out the form in the description. If you did enjoy the content and want to support me or get some added benefits to the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon in the description as well. But apart from that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'll thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.